Hey, welcome back. This is another exciting episode of Mr. Takeda Teaches Algebra for the year 2020. This time I'm coming from a secret location, a secret lair where I uh, fight crime from. Um, this is lesson 2.2 in which we solve inequalities by addition or subtraction. And of course, we're going to ask the essential question, how do you use addition or subtraction to solve an inequality? Well, that should be pretty straightforward, I think. Let's see. Wow, went really fast. Okay, addition property of inequality. As I've said in the past, the uh, inequalities are like cousins of equations, so they have a lot of the same properties, and uh, addition and subtraction are one of them. And that if I start with a true inequality, such as negative 3 is less than 2, and if I add 4 to both of those, both sides, just like inequalities and equations, we're dealing with sides. So we do the same thing to both sides. I'm going to end up with a true inequality. 1 is less than 6. And in algebra, I mean, we have different examples here for the greater than and less than and things like that. We've got, you know, because we have all these different permutations of the uh, inequalities uh, greater than, less than, uh, greater than, equal to, less than, or equal to. Uh, gets gets a little much in terms of the examples, but they're all really the same. And that is just basically if I start with a true inequality, such as A is greater than B, I can add the same thing to both sides, as long as I'm adding the same thing to both sides, in this case C, I will end up with a true inequality. So that is... Uh, addition property of inequality. So let's look at an example here. x minus 6 is greater than or equal to negative 10, and we want to graph the solution. Well, again, just like with equations, we want the x by itself. So I'm going to add 6 to essentially turn the negative 6 into a plus 0. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Whatever I do to the left, I must also do to the right, so I'll add 6 to the right. That leaves me x is greater than or equal to negative 4. That is my solution. So we're going to graph this solution here. My boundary is at negative 4. I'm going to use a solid dot because x is also equal to negative 4. So there's one solution. x is equal to negative 4. But x is also greater than negative 4. So all the numbers that are greater than negative 4 are two, going to be to the right of negative 4. Like that. Okay, so those all the, remember, a, a line like this is just a series of points. So this is an infinite number of points that look like a line. We, we represent it with a line. All right, let's take a look at subtraction properties of inequality. Subtraction property of inequality is just like subtraction property subtraction property of, a, 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 of equality, of equations. If I start with a true inequality, like negative 3 is less than or equal to 1, that is true. I can add the same thing to both sides and come up with a true inequality. Okay? That's just this one over here. And just like just like in algebra, you know, if A is less than or equal to B, I can subtract the same thing from both sides and still come up with a true inequality. Quality. The left side will still be less than the right side. Okay. It's just like if you and your friend each had $100. I'm sorry. If you had $100 and your friend had $50, you have more than your friend. If you each give me ten dollars well I'd be very happy and very appreciative of that but if you each gave me ten dollars you would have 90 your friend would have 40 you would still have more than your friend that inequality still holds all right let's take a look at uh, some examples for uh, subtraction property of inequality these are on page 63 of your text I start with an inequality y plus 8 is less than or equal to 5 I want to solve I want to subtract 8 from both sides to make this side 0. So y is less than or equal to negative 3. Right, so our boundary is here at negative 3. I want to color that in as a solid dot because I want y to be equal to negative 3, which it is. And then 
the numbers that are less than negative 3 over here to the left of negative 3. Uh, example 2b, negative 8 is less than 1.4 plus m. Um, again, the side with the variable, I want to isolate that variable. So I'm going to subtract 1.4 from both sides. That leaves me m on the right, negative 9.4 on the left. Um, so I know my boundary is negative 9.4, which is going to be in here somewhere. I know it's going to be an open circle because there is no uh, equal bar. It's not equal. But which way do I draw my inequality? Well, just like we said yesterday, it might be easier if you rewrite this, putting the variable first. And because I'm pointing to the, to the negative 9.4 originally, I want to maintain that because negative, it's always pointing to the smaller thing. So if I flip, if I flip the order of these things, negative 9.4 is still going to be smaller. So m is greater than negative 9.4. So that's going to be in this direction here. OK. And notice I go, I fill the line all the way up, and I put a big arrow at the end. That means that this is going to go on forever. Um, I don't know how much you know about uh, graphing on a number line inequalities, but this big arrow here means it's going to go on forever to the right. Because all those numbers to the left of negative 9.4 are greater than negative 9.4. OK, let's take a look at uh, our last example here, modeling with mathematics. This is on page 64. A circuit overloads at 1800 watts of electricity. So you plug in a microwave that uses 1100 watts of electricity into that circuit. Write and solve an inequality that represents how many watts you can add to the circuit without overloading the circuit. And then in addition to the microwave oven, which of the following appliances, etc. So we'll look at that in a second. Let's just go back to A here. Let's talk about what we want to do here. So the circuit overloads at 1800 watts of electricity. Um, essentially what happens is um, different appliances, they draw, they draw a certain amount of power from the circuits that you plug uh, when you plug them into the wall and they're saying that this microwave oven uses uh, 1100 watts but it overloads at 1800 watts so what does that mean that means whatever our total of appliances are their total watts has to be less than 1800 it can't be equal to 1800 because then it would overload. So it has to be less than 1800. Okay, so the appliance watts, we know one of them is going to be 1100. That's our microwave. And we're going to add to that some unknown amount of watts. And that has to be less than or equal to 1800. Okay, so this, uh, this satisfies the first part of A. We've written an inequality that represents how many watts we can add to the circuit without overloading it. So let's go ahead and solve it here. I'm going to subtract 1100 from both sides. And that's going to leave me x has to be less than 700 watts. OK, so that would that actually satisfies the second part of A, write and solve. So this is A and this is also A. We wrote it and we solved it. So now question B says, in addition to the microwave oven, which of the following appliances can you plug into the circuit at the same time without overloading the circuit? Well, the clock radio is 50, the blender is 300, the toaster is 80, the hot plate though is 1200. So anything but the hot plate is the answer to this. So. Um, and actually, and any combination of those three would still work. They would still come in under 700. Right, so that's example three. And uh, let's see now. Before you go, solve these two. We put the answers in at the end of the pod on Jupiter grades. And that's it. So pause the screen here, get these done, and I'll see you in class. Have a great, great rest of your day. Bye-bye.